your real being is all imagination. As Blake tells us so clearly in his Always of Innocence concerning man. He said, man appears, or God appears, and God is light to those poor souls who dwell in night. But does the human form display to those who dwell in realms of day? It's man. When I stood in the presence of infinite love, it was man. It always is man. Trying to be more than man, you become less. It's stupid. It's all man. God is man. And you are man. So I tell you, don't try to think you're going to find anything outside of man that is God. God is man. And so when you actually hear the word imagination is God, think of man. And when you say, well, my imagination, that's the being that you really are. And you are man, aren't you? Well, that's man. It's a person. And he actually dwells in you. Very deeply. And one day, he who is your slave now will rise in you. And when he rises in you, you are the one in whom he rose. You are the very one who rose within you. And he is not then a man. He is the man, the universal man. And you are the universal man containing all men within you. And then one after one will rise and one after one will become the man. And in the end, it's only God. And you are God. I am the true vine. And my father is the vine dresser. Every branch in me that bears no fruit, he takes it away. And every branch that bears fruit, he prunes it that it may bear more. And because I and my Father are one, I am divine brother. So I have to be observant as to what is not bearing and what is bearing. And what is bearing, I must prune it. It must bear more fruit. So my income is so-and-so, prune it, bear more. And so my way of life is so-and-so, prune it that it become greater and keep on pruning it. I don't judge these things as to the nature of the tree, but you prune it as you have the desire to prune it. And because the whole vast world is yourself to yourself, for he said, you have no life unless you are rooted in me. When you hear the distress of the extended you, then you prune that barren area. And in your own mind's eye, you feel that they are as they ought to be. And then drop it. The secret is dropping. Let me go. The last statement, or one of the last statements in the Gospel. Do not hold me. Let me go. If you hold on to it, then you haven't dropped it. And a seed must fall into the ground and die before it is made alive. If I hold on to it, and keep on holding on to it, I haven't dropped it. And it has to be dropped and left alone too. Can't pick it up every morning to see it has roots. I must drop it, leave it alone, and then confront the harvest. For we're all part of it. I was drafted in 1942. I didn't volunteer. My son volunteered at the age of 17 in the Marine Corps, right after Pearl Harbor. He was in Guadalcanal, and I had a little girl who was only a matter of months. She was born in June, and they drafted me in November. This is the child's child. But I didn't oppose it. All right, that's part of the country, and we are at war. I didn't know what the devil I could give, because I'm not given that way. But maybe they could use me to their prayers for them or something. And so I allowed myself to be drafted. I didn't oppose it. I didn't know where they would put me. 
And I have never been able to drive a car in my life. Never. In Barbados, I had no occasion to do it. Living in New York City, I took taxis or subways or buses. And since I've been out here, I take buses or I drive with friends. And where do you think they put me? In the armored division. And then the whole crowd of us, the whole bunch, thousands of us, and they asked anyone who could not drive a car to raise their hand. Two hands went up. One was mine. And here I am in the armored division, the 11th armored division, with all these tanks and all these trucks and all these things. I've never driven anything in my life. So they put me in the armored division. Not the infantry. That's what we do. Snafu is the really snafu when it comes to the army. So what do you do for a living? I said, I lecture. On what? Well, I lecture on the word of God. We all started to laugh. Put him in the medics and teach him how to drive a car. Well, they couldn't teach me to drive a car. One sergeant gave me two lessons and he said he'll give him no more because he'll kill me. So they gave me this little tiny thing and I went around that place, he said what to do, and I couldn't get my foot off the pressure. And we were going around on two wheels. And he said, I've done, I've done all I can do, I'll give you no more lessons. So they gave me no more lessons. And then they finally resolved the whole thing. And I was used to talk to the boys on first aid. I know nothing of first aid, but at least I could speak. So here is a book. Take the book, memorize it, and then we'll bring a company in one after the other, and you teach the, the men on first aid. Well, I could memorize the book quickly. So they were coming, and I talked to them on first aid. I knew nothing of first aid. But at least I, if the book was correct, I could tell them what the book says. But I'm telling you what the book says. That I am the true one. And my father is the vine dresser. And I and my father are one. And the eternal vine is the human imagination. And all things come out of the human imagination. There is nothing in this world that is created, but it's created by the human imagination. Everything in the world. You may say, did the earthquake come out? Yes, it did. Everything comes out of the human imagination. These are only pressures built up by man's own wonderful human imagination. And they must be released. You build a pressure and it's released. But not a thing is creating anything in this world but God. And God is your own wonderful human imagination. But do not treat it as something you must simply once a week observe. Or once a day or once a year. Every moment of time you observe what you are imagining, because what you are imagining you are creating, morning, noon and night. And prune your tree all through the day, and it will become a habit and you'll prune it all through the night. And then in the not distant future, he who is the eternal vine will awaken, and you are he. And you'll know he is God the Father, because God's only begotten Son will stand before you and call you Father. And you will know he is your Son, and he will know you are his Father. And there'll be no uncertainty as to this relationship. And everything said in Scripture concerning him, you are going to be free. Now let us go into the Son.